From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello everyone, I'm Wes Talon, and from the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700 on DCTV 23, thanks for joining me. It's January, the beginning of a new year, the beginning of a new county administration. After 12 years of leadership by Tom Worthen, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones was elected Chairman of the Board of Commissioners. I decided to dedicate this episode of 8700 to a conversation with Chairman Jones so that you and I can possibly get to know her better and learn about her plans for Douglas County. This is a get to know you interview, not one on issues, actions and policies, but hopefully she'll come back in a few months and I can ask her those kinds of questions. So Madam Chairman, thank you for joining me. I'm very delighted to be here this morning. Thank, thank you, Wes, for inviting me. It's my pleasure. Um, I grew up in the Deep South. You grew up in the South, I understand. Yes. I grew up in Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee. My family's from South Carolina. When you grow up in the Deep South and you meet somebody new, the first question almost always is, where's your family from? So, Chairman Jones, That's a good where's your question. family from? Good question. <laughs> My family our roots are from uh, Tennessee and Mississippi. I was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. and. Uh, my mother is actually from Mississippi and my dad is from Tennessee. So that's where we are from. That's where our roots are. Okay, so Memphis right there being on the Mississippi line and yes. all like that. How did mom and dad meet? Well, my mother moved from Mississippi when she was 18 years old and she happened to meet my dad. She was at a shopping center, I, I recall. That's many, many years ago. Uh, that was actually in 1955 uh, when she met him. and. Um, she said he was a handsome guy, and I agree with her. Still today, he's deceased now, and she was beautiful as well. So they happened to meet, and they uh, married in 1956. And then in 19, late 1956, they had my brother. He was born, and then I was born in 1958, and they had another baby uh, in 1965, my sister. So it's three of us, and I'm the middle child. You're the, oh my gosh, you're the middle <laughs> child. That explains a lot already. Um, <laughs> Was it love at first sight? It was, uh, as my mother said, yes, because he was strikingly handsome. But not only that, she said he was super intelligent, very smart guy. So uh, he served in the Korean War. Um, for, so he was a veteran? He was a veteran. In which branch of the service? Uh, Army, and he received a Purple Heart, uh, actually, because he was with a battalion of 965 soldiers that um, jumped in North Korea, of course, during the war, uh, wartime. He was a paratrooper. And only, I believe he said only 85 returned. And he was one of them. And he talked, he sp uh, spoke about his horrific experience. So. Did it traumatize him? In you the know, war? he is such a strong guy. I, no, it did not. He is just, uh, actually, he, he said in life sometimes you have to roll over and play dead. And because of that experience, he had to play dead because. Uh, in speaking with him, he said all the, the soldiers, the, the, the Korean soldiers would turn them over one at a time to see if they were actually dead. And he said he was able to play dead and, and, and he said he beat the Koreans at their own game. And of course he uh, uh, crawled, he said, and he just spoke of the experience about a week and he said, he don't know how many days, I won't say a week, but he said he could hear the Yellow Sea and the Yellow Sea was the noise that allowed him to crawl toward the sea. And he said once he hit the Yellow Sea, he took his T-shirt off and waved it. And of course, helicopters spotted him and pulled him up. So he, it was a horrific experience, but he said that was a life learned lesson. So that's what made him strong. And he actually lived until he was 77 years old. Okay, so he was able to share these experiences. Absolutely. And the strength that he has from there. What about your mom? My mom is the hardest working woman in show business. Uh, she's uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, she has superior work ethics. Uh, she's a um, business owner. She's been one for 52 years. Uh, she's still in the business. Uh, she's a cosmetologist. Uh, she is. Um, she's still in Memphis? She's still in Memphis. She'll be actually 80 in March of this year. So we're getting ready for a big 80th birthday party. But uh, she's the, uh, she supports her kids, her children, Fully, and she is a, an amazing mother. 
Um, she's there for you no matter what. And your siblings? Oh, my brother is a minister. He's a pastor in um, Crenshaw, Mississippi. He's been uh, Pleasant Grove uh, Baptist Church. Uh, he's been a minister there for 25 years. Uh, and then also, he is the first African-American construction foreman for Memphis Light, Gas, and Water uh, Division. He received that uh, position about two years ago. My sister is, uh, she worked for IBM for 20 years, and then she worked for Apple for about four years, and now she's with the uh, medical company. And she uh, has an MBA, MBA in finance, uh, so she is a bean counter, that's what we call her. She's very, she <laughs> loves money, to count money, and of course she's uh, always worked for Fortune 500 companies during her lifetime. Okay, so she received her education, your brother did his, you said your yeah, father he, was... My, yeah, my brother received, actually received his, uh, he has a master's from uh, seminary college uh, in, actually I believe the college is in Mississippi, but his uh, bachelor's is from Knoxville College. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about college, let's talk about your own. Yes, your okay. Your undergraduate degree? It was uh, actually Southern Illinois University, and my undergraduate degree is in healthcare management. I'm a leader, so everything I've attached to my degrees are management, leadership, administration, and so on and so forth. My master's is from Chapman University uh, in Orange, California, and uh, it is a master's in health administration. And my doctorate is in education with, uh, it is an EDD, and with a concentration in leadership. Okay, what's a Saluki? Saluki, that is part of <laughs> Southern Illinois University. That's, that's our alma mater. That's our... That's your mascot. The mascot, the mascot yes. mascot on yes. there, and it's a dog. Yeah, the dog, Saluki. Kind of, kind of looks like a, um, almost like a greyhound or something like that. Yeah. As I've told you before, I was the Golden Eagle at Tennessee Tech for a season, so mm -hmm. I um, always look for uh, things like that and all. So now tell me who uh, Pete the Panther is. Oh, now you're really t testing my Pete skill. the Panther, <laughs> Chapman University. Chap Chapman, Chapman okay. University, where you went. And, and that was in and, California, actually. That was yeah. in California mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and doing that. Um, you have children of your own. I do. Uh, Shannon Jones, uh, she's a, actually a teacher at Douglas County High School. She teaches English, and she's a cheerleading coach there at Douglas County High School. Okay, now, your family's from Memphis. Yes. You were married to a Marine. Yeah. And y'all traveled all over Kingdom Come, practically we, we from, from what it said. That's how you have your degrees from all over creation, too. Right. And doing some things like that. And you were a Marine wife for, for uh, many years. Yes. On that. And you were in the Army yourself. Yes. Why did you go into the Army? Well, you know what? I followed the footsteps of my father. Uh, uh, he spoke highly of his experience and I wanted to do so and and you know what I I, ne I will never regret that experience it's what it's an experience of uh, it, its structure it teaches you discipline and uh, I, it was a great experience for me I went in actually on the buddy system with a friend uh, and thought that uh, we were going to complete our careers together, but because they called me a brainiac when I was young, I always master every test, everyone, I always, I'm number one in the class. She didn't make it, I stayed, they called my name Jackson at that time, uh, the, um, should I say, not the drill instructor, but the instructor of the class, and said, so Jackson, you'll be, you're headed on to uh, Augusta, Georgia, actually, so for your next step. So I just had to complete my course without my buddy. Without your buddy, do you still keep in touch with that we person? We do. We are still friends. We were, we've been friends uh, for 55 years now because we met when we were three. Oh. Yeah. And you remember that? Yes. And we, yes. Yes, I do. I don't remember. <laughs> I have a great memory. Elementary school is just kind of a fog oh, or I something back there. Speaking of elementary school, I have three teachers that had a great in, uh, influence in my life. And I remember my fourth grade teacher, Pauline Hardy, uh, fifth grade teacher, London May Campbell, and my sixth grade teacher, um, it, it was Lois Jean Williams. These three women really had an impact on who I am today in, you know, in conjunction with my parents. Mm. Well, let me go into that for just a moment. I had that listed down uh, to ask a little later, but since you brought it up, 
other than those, other than your, your parents, other than those three teachers, mm -hmm. who are the heroes and heroines in your life? Well, first of all, God is my hero because he, he makes things happen and possible for me. And then if you look at other people that have influenced me along, along the way, have been some great professors. I love Vince Lombardi. I love his style. Uh, he is been a person that's influenced me. I like the things he says. He says there's no room for second place, and I agree with him. He was uh, a managing and leadership is nothing but coaching. Uh, they're all on the same level, and he has just been an influence. I love his quotes. I follow him, his uh, quotes by the law. Um, he, he, if I have to think of someone, it would be Vince Lombardi. And I love Tony Dungy. The quiet strength. I, my leadership style has been compared to him, Tony Dungy. Mm -hmm. Quiet Coach strength. Of the Colts. Yep, yep, yep. And also Tampa Bay. Yes. Yeah. We so. don't talk about Tampa Bay. <laughs> they're they're the rivals of Atlanta. Forget that. We'll talk about the other ones on that. But mm, okay, Tony Dungy. He's Tony now Dungy. retired. Yeah, he's retired, and Vince Lombardi. So you can tell I lay on coaching because managing is coaching, or leadership is coaching, because you continuously trying to. Uh, think of a next play or how to do it or how to do it better or what have you so I those are if I said influence those would be the two people that's influenced my life okay so now we've talked about Memphis we've talked about did your basic training at Fort Jackson yeah Fort Jackson okay. South Carolina I know it well uh -huh. my family's from Columbia okay that's where Fort Jackson is um, you went to Augusta mm -hmm. you've studied at Southern Illinois you've got your degrees from California Stuff like that. And then my uh, doctorate is from Atlanta, this the Argus University from of Atlanta. University. And then also the Academy of Health Sciences in Fort Sam Houston, Texas, I was there as well. For my uh, medic, I was a medic, I actually had a Geneva Convention card. That was back in 76, I'm dating myself, but of course. Uh, then also from there uh, uh, was the 91D specialist, which is an operating room specialist, and that's an intensive course. Had to learn all the surgical instruments, uh, all the surgical procedures procedures and then headed to straight to Augusta, Georgia and the first procedure, a surgical procedure I performed with a surgeon was a bowel resection. So had to make sure you knew everything the surgeons needed. So it was just an amazing uh, moment and journey for me and then from there life has just taken off. Did you choose health care or was that part of your army? I, 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 I chose health care. I, okay. I, you know, it, uh, when I graduated, they said, what do you want to be? I said, I know it's going to be health care related uh, because it's serving. I love to serve people, and that's what I've done for 40 years. I actually retired from Children's Health Care of Atlanta uh, on April 15th of uh, 2016 after serving 40 years in health care. So I have a, a, a long history, uh, longevity in that field. And, Okay, so where I was kind of going with the, the previous statement was, how'd you end up in Douglas County? Well, that's a good question. We were, the last duty station, we were in Denver, Colorado. And daughter, my daughter graduated, uh, our daughter graduated in 2002. Uh, and I'm only child, so you know, a mothers with only children tend to be Helicopter parents. Yes, we are. So <laughs> I did not like that distance between North Carolina and Colorado. So one night, got a map, put my hand on Douglas County, and said, this is where we will live. Now, she was in North Carolina? She was in North Carolina, but I didn't want to go all the way to the Carolinas because I wanted to give her some space as a mother, but of course wanted to be able to respond That's quickly great. if I needed to get there within, within five hours. And so I thought that was great. So um, we chose Douglas County had not a clue, um, but I knew I wanted to return back to the South. So my husband at that time agreed and he said, let's go and the rest is history and I love Douglas County. Okay. Your, um, let's talk about your political career now. Okay. In 2010, you ran for District 3 Commissioner. Yes. And then in 2012, you ran for chairman of the Board of Commissioners, and of course in 2016. Why get into politics? Well, you know what? When I, um, when I was 10 years old, it was, uh, I was in fifth grade, and I was identified as a leader. Uh, president Nixon was elected president that year, 
And believe it or not, the fifth, the entire fifth grade class in my elementary school held an election. And I did not know, someone nominated me to be the class of the fifth grade class, and we had some other nominees. And I mean, I had students that it, were not even familiar with me, and they lined up like an election poll, you know, everybody was in line and they were voting. And, and it was a big deal. And I'm running fifth grade of the, class. Yeah, the fifth grade class. And I'm going, what is going on? Who nominated me? You know, thinking. But of course, won the election um, a landslide. And when Nixon was inaugurated, it was my big day. The fifth grade class, all, back in the day, they had doors where you can open up the class. So they opened up the doors, uh, the sliding doors in the classroom. So all the fifth graders, so it might have been 200 students there. And I had the hat on, hand up, you know, and I, I governed that fifth grade class. So that was the turning moment for me. Uh, no, you had you know, to make a speech. I had to make an inaugural speech. It was. <laughs> <laughs> so at that time, I knew that I was a leader. I am a leader. So I thought, okay. And then a little later, um, 10th grade experience, I was nominated for Miss Southmore. And I said, how did I get here again? And I was chosen and selected by that class, uh, overwhelmingly by the 10th grade class at Hamilton High School. And then from there, I was a cheerleader and just been always involved. And my dad was a bedside politician. Bedside politician? I call it a bedside politician. Now what's that? That means he can, he watched TV. TV, uh, television, continu on a continuous basis, CNN and all those stations, mm -hmm. and he could tell you anything you want to know about politics. Mm -hmm. He predicted some of the presidents before they won, who would be the winner. So he was just an amazing gentleman with the po political side. And then I, I was the visibility director uh, for the Obama campaign here in Douglas County. Uh, I led a state senate. I was a uh, campaign manager for a state senate uh, race here in Georgia uh, in 2009. So. I, and then in 2010, I said, let me run, and um, I love serving. So my, I'm not a politician, I'm a servant, and uh, I believe that I'm the right leader at the right time. Why the offices you ran for? Your doctorate degree is in education. Right. Your health care experience and undergraduate and master's degree your experience in the medical field all over everywhere, ending with Children's Health Care of, of Atlanta, where if I didn't know you, mm -hmm. and I would look at your political resume and your professional resume, I would think that you would most likely run maybe for a state rep or a state senate where you could actually enact legislation benefiting your health care industry. Mm -hmm. Right. Why, Why at this? the local level? Mm -hmm. Well, at the local level, because you know what, politics starts at the local level. And uh, budget and policy and leadership and management, uh, of course, with 31 years out of the 40 years, I am more suited for that. I'm more of a one-on-one -on -one person. This is more of a personable level, uh, should I say that, from the, from the county perspective. Um, the background, because we say healthcare related, believe it or not, it is a complex industry. Uh, it is one of the most stressful industries in the United States, that along with the airlines industry. So I am very much suited for the position because it is the leader. I have the craft, the confidence, and the ability to endure high levels of stress that other leaders cannot do or cannot endure. Um, Why do you feel like you've got that? Management is management. Budget is budget. Uh, the principles of accounting never change. I've, I've managed huge budgets, a lot larger than the one here in Douglas County. In fact, I led the largest master facility planning and execution project in the history of Georgia at Children's Health Care of Atlanta, and it was a trillion dollar project. So very comfortable with leading budgets. Uh, technology, I'm on the cusp, uh, uh, right at the cutting edge of technology. And, since I've been here, I've seen some lot of things that I'm bringing in my suitcase that's going to benefit this county, technology-wise, take us to the next level. Uh, there's going to be opportunity for us to be at the forefront. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable and accustomed to negotiations and uh, contracts and bidding and competitive bidding because I've run uh, materials management and supply areas for hospitals as well. So mine has not uh, been all specifically clinical. I have nine years clinical, but everything else has been management, leadership, administration, everything that it really encompasses to run a county. How can you handle the stress better than others? 
You know what? Um, I have been at the, when you um, run an operation as an operations manager and we manage the unexpected every day. That means I may come in today and it's a uh, normal day and five minutes later that could pivot to a gunshot wound to the chest. We could have a, a car wreck. I was involved with the Columbine shooting. My, I was mine, you know, I was shopping that day for actually stepped out for lunch and my secretary called me and said we've had a mass shooting. We need you to get back. And then when I walked into the emergency room, I've never seen that many suitcases, doctors come out of retirement, suitcases, briefcases, what have you, getting ready so we could save some lives that day. And actually I had to step out of my role as a leader that day and become clinical again because uh, a couple of other doctors and surgeons said we have some gun, gunshot wounds to the chest, can you support us on the clinical side? So uh, it's, it's stressful. I, I'd rather deal with dealing with customer service, making sure that uh, the citizens of Douglas County receive that number one carte blanche service from me uh, rather than also on the other end sometimes uh, gunshot wounds to the chest. I've saved many lives. I've been right on that cutting end and I believe this experience will allow, it, allow, it allows me to listen, it allows me to stay calm and cool under pressure and a lot of leaders are just, they can't stay calm and cool under pressure so I just want to just talk about my past experiences elevated me to be prepared for anything that comes before me at this point. And writing a dissertation as a doctor, doctor, that, that is an amazing journey. It's incredible, it's high level stress. I have, you name it, I can do it when it comes to stress, but um, that, I don't want stress to be my legacy. I want results to be my legacy and that's what it has been at Children's Healthcare Atlanta. I actually received a resolution from the State Senate uh, of Georgia in um, April of 2016 uh, regarding my, what I've done for the state of Georgia in terms of my medical background and my healthcare experience, my 40 years in healthcare, uh, what I've done for the citizens. And I will be receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award from President Obama on April, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, on January uh, 18th of this, really this month and, mm -hmm. and next week. So I will be receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award from him. And then also keep in mind for this position, <clears throat> when you look at the, uh, the, the requirements for the position, uh, it says 21 years old and a citizen of Douglas County for I believe two years. And then also I believe some of my uh, predecessors, if you look at their background, they've just been basically um, maybe marketing, sales, that has nothing to do with leadership and management and, and uh, budget and policy. I came first day ready to lead an operation. And it's very prevalent that I know what I'm doing because everybody say you are on point. It, 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 you Leadership, I was born first of all, natural leader, but also I have the experience. And it's very prevalent by the day that when I hit the doors, everybody's like, wow, I can't believe you coming in fully, you're ready to roll because of the years that I've done it. Now, the logistics and the, the building, the geography, I'm still kind of learning my work my way around, but management and leadership never changes if you know what you're doing. What's your ultimate goal? My ult ultimate goal is to transform our county from ordinary to extraordinary uh, by effectively, while still effectively managing our budget as it has been done in the past with efficient checks and balances, but I want to focus on economic development, uh, transportation infrastructure, and public health compliance. We have opportunities for that. I'm uh, making sure that our fire and, and EMS system, which again, that's that connection, I'm very fully astute and understand that area. We will be number one in the country. We will be, uh, we will lead best practice. We will, uh, we will accrue a number one in our IOS, ISO standards. Um, our roads, I want to make sure that we take advantage of grants and make sure that we are at the table at, at every opportunity to get grants for this, for our county, to make sure that we're at the forefront of technology, innovation. And then also to make sure that we are on the map here in Douglas County. I want to put us on the map. I want us to, um, um, we are already on the map, but we want to be one of the big players at the table. And we're still a small county and we realize that, but we still can think big. Personally, mm -hmm. away from county, mm -hmm. what's your ultimate goal? 
Oh, my ultimate goal is to be appointed to the president's cabinet. I heard that. Yes. I kind of wondered if that was it. Yes. Okay. Yes. As? You know what? I could, I would love to, it could be um, urban housing and development. It could be health. And really, usually when, you, for example, uh, when you usually do something forever, you want to move and do something different. Because just because you've done one thing in life, you not you don't necessarily have to do it again I would love to even I could be Secretary of Defense if I had to be <laughs> um, because of my my ability to lead and comfortability with uh, making decisions uh, quickly if I had to um, but probably housing and urban development would be one I'm going to ask you to just make a comment on something that you had posted on your website, your okay. campaign website. Okay. And I want to end with this because of everything it kind of leads up to this statement. And it said that your goal was to restore trust and confidence in county government. Yeah. Do you not feel that we have trust and confidence in, in Douglas County government? Well, you know what? There's opportunity in everything. So when I say that to restore absolutely we transparency we have an opportunity to to elevate our level of transparency and I've, I've made that very clear on day one by uh, number one we have cameras in place we have microphones in place in our for our work sessions so that's number one but also I'll be looking at other opportunities such as providing our outside uh, external customers with mm -hmm. information that they need that's already privy to them anyway so we can make sure that that information is there that are cut down on questions being asked about what are we doing because, because government should be clearly transparent. And that's, that's why I'm to restore that trust. You know, every, you can't make all your citizens happy. Now remember, I was on the campaign trail. So mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with uh, constituents and citizens. And yeah, a lot of them did speak about trust uh, of, of our government. But um, again, I assured them if I was elected or I, that I would make a difference and that would be an area that I would look at. And I, and I asked the question, I'm like you, I said, define what you, mm -hmm. what, give me your de definition of trust. And they said transparency, things that you all could do better. You could provide things. I said, okay, we'll do that. We, they said, we want your, your, your uh, meetings taped. We want uh, a leader that responds to us when we call. So I'm actually, I'm, I think I've set standards where others will be judged. I've, when I'm receiving phone calls thus far, I'm calling people back within at least six or seven hours or either with at least the first thing the next day. Mm -hmm. So they want the, they want the response and the, the citizens want some a, a listener. And I do a very good job of that. And, and a lot of times I may not have a solution for you, but my, I will listen. And then I won't just not give you a solution. I'll research uh, and then I'll get back with you. And uh, my goal is hopefully with the win-win solution um, as we both dialogue, but my goal is to, again, set standards where others will be judged. And, and that, that uh, term came from a, a colonel a long time ago. I ran a, an environmental program for the Department of the Navy, and this colonel says, Ramona Jackson Jones set standards where others will be judged. And that's just who I am. Um, again, uh, Vince Lombardi said there's no room for second place. Uh, some of the pundits say she's an overachiever. I am. And that's what I do. I challenge myself. Uh, I'm from a family of overachievers. And I constantly, I, I hold Ramona accountable. So when she does not do the right thing, I can't expect anybody else to do it better. Okay. okay? Well, we wish you well. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank I appreciate you. this very, very much. Thank you. And that's the news for now from 8700. I'm Wes Talon. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.